Hi, I'm Felix. Welcome to Best Ball Nation. Yo, yo, yo. How we doing, everybody? Today, I've got the one and only Rob Coakley. How you doing today, buddy? You presented me as the king of ghosts on yes. Twitter, which yes. was not something I've been called yet, but I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'll take it. I'll take it. You're, you're the highest person I know in ghost. And in the ghost, ghost community. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so to me, you deserve that title. Fair. I'll take it. Yeah. So uh, how, how are things? How are things? Good, man. Been jumping in the best ball streets, of course, getting my drafts in before best ball mania, really trying different things within this particular tournament to get myself ready for best ball mania, not just best ball mania, but you know, the DraftKings tournaments, the drafters tournaments where we start firing massive amounts of bullets yes, yes. and hopefully ship one sort of like you did a couple years back. Um, yeah. Trying, trying to come up to the king of DraftKings. Yes. I'm the king of ghosts. You're the king of DraftKings, which is a thanks. So no, no one else has been really trying to be the like person on DraftKings. I'm like, I'll, I'll hold that area if nobody really wants to. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, do your thing. I, yeah. I don't mind the DraftKings tournaments. It's just uh, when the interface crashes on me is when I get a little annoyed. I haven't had any problems except the one time where it like. It had like 13 people, but it's like, other than that one time, we, we've been good. We've been good. The one time it had this catastrophic <laughs> failure. Other than that, we're good. We're good. We're good. Cool, man. Uh, uh, I'm excited. Have you uh, have you been taking some stands in this tournament? I feel like this is the tournament to take stands in. So, okay. So this is the exact opposite of what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I'm spreading myself th because I know what I want to do in, in BBM. And so mm -hmm. there's just going to be some players I just want to 100%. Yeah. And, and like on here, I actually been trying to fade Najee, hoping that when BBM does drop, he stays where he's at. That way it's easier for me to get him. Oh, it must be so tough for you right now, <laughs> especially with the fall. I have had like two shares of Najee, maybe three. It is it is about as uh, small amount of shares that I've had of Najee I've ever had, mm. ever drafting before. I All see. Right. We're going to go ahead and jump into this one. I wish they had just big board, 10 doll hairs. Yes. Uh, uh, my favorite underdog situation. Okay. So let me just maybe jump in for my phone, log out and log into this one real quick. I did this, happened to me last week too. Yeah. I had this, I actually had this issue for like a week last year where I don't even have a VPN and it wouldn't let me log in via my computer. So I've been there with that. So you've just been doing these best ball streams? You've been doing anything else? I liked your Goku shirt in your open. Are you oh, yeah. uh, jumping into any other streets, or are we sticking strictly to best ball here? So I'm thinking about uh, using my old YouTube channel, the one I usually comment on in uh, streams. Yeah. And making, like, anime and, like, movies and just, like, general life stuff, stuff that actually interests me outside of best ball. Very cool. But uh, so far, I've been trying to just – build up a community over here on on best ball yeah i mean it's it's a grind for sure yeah um we just started doing well, we've done them in the past but we started doing video game streams over on a new channel for hometown ghost stories so last okay, so night i i try to do video games yeah and i feel like my computer is good enough mm -hmm. but i can't it every time i pull it up it's super super unlike choppy yeah it's super choppy Streamyard stuff for that. Um, yeah, so like I so I bought a new, I bought a uh, one of the uh, things that go with my computer. The uh, why am I trying yeah. to uh, capture card, and it just doesn't doesn't work. So you, you gotta use something. I mean, we're able to fortunately use Streamyard, but I think if you're trying to do that, you're gonna wanna. So I did OBS, and it was still choppy. So I was oh, just like, really? you know what? I'll just go through the Xbox. It has a Twitch app, but yeah. I gotcha. Where do we get for a draft spot here? Uh, let me pull up the draft. The twelve, spot. of course. We're definitely not. Yep. And right next to our uh, one of my favorite uh, people in my 
chat is uh this is Derek, uh, also known as Gabe Davis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we we've we've established who Gabe Davis is. That's yes, uh yes, yes. breaking news here on Best yeah. Ball Nation. Wow, you just that, voted on. Uh, I won't I won't I won't tell anyone, Derek. I I'll play along when it's a spike week stream. And then uh it's Toast 420, but he's not in here. Oh yes, he is. He's at the five spot. So te- definitely Dennis is uh four, 420. Toast 420. Okay, perfect. So I got my guys in here. Felix, wow, just <laughs> one of spots, but we're I won't tell. I'll be quiet about it. Although everyone's gonna watch the stream anyways. Yeah, because I keep riveting numbers. <laughs> I also do this more for fun because I like doing it, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And it'd be cool to have it on camera if I want to. Well, what do you think this year is going to be? Four, four million, five million? Dude, I don't even know. I, I, I hope they flatten it out a bit, but, yeah. but it, it's just it's the poker thing where they would just rather have the number up top and i'm not i'm not knocking any company in general i understand the the marketing practice for it but you know it was it's been a problem in poker for years it's going to be a problem in all best ball tournaments because everyone's going to want to put that number up top rather than make the payments make more sense so yeah that is a uh, it's unfortunate but it is what it is are you taking a lot of Bijan now? I can't remember if you were. Hells yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was on. I was on it before, right before they drafted Kirk, and then he shot up the board. Yeah, I was on the Bijan. That like that is my one call of the early drafting. Was I was taking Bijan wherever I could take him before mm-hmm. you know, like from the one hundred and one up through the one hundred and nine, I believe. And I'm still taking Bijan because I'm fading CD, CMC, and Tyree Kill. See, so, I'm going to fade them in the big board. I'm fading those uh, those two Pacific uh, CD and uh, CMC. I'm going to fade them entirely, and maybe even Justin Jefferson, it, depending on who they draft. Yeah, I think I'm still going to take Jefferson, but we're on the clock here. Uh, what, what, what have you been doing when you do this? I I love the AJ Brown Kyron. Okay, play yeah, here. Cool find me. We I, might get Hurts or Devontae Smith. With the yeah, I, I know it's like. I know it was the top two players on the board, but I honestly, I've been drafting all Kyron if I can get them. Yeah, if I absolutely. Can. Do love me some Kyron in this tournament. I love a lot of the twelve swings that you can get, whether it's Garrett Wilson and Kyron, mm-hmm. two of the wide receivers as well. I've been kind of passing on Puka. It's not that I don't like him, but he got beat up pretty good last year, and not that he can't just, you know, just be healthy at the beginning of the year. But he did take kind of a little bit of a beating. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And just to think that he's going to replicate what he did last year. I think it's possible should. in that offense. So I, I'm not going to. Well, I don't think I'll pull him up. Cooper but I Cup think was happen. there the entire year is what I was like in my mental space was thinking. And also they didn't experience Kyron also from the get go. I think there's just a couple things that are going to take away. I don't think there's anything wrong with drafting him because mm-hmm. he's going to get drafted regardless and they're all going to get drafted regardless so well, it was also sticker shock in the beginning of the tournament right where yeah he's at the end of the first round yeah. and you're you're just sometimes you got to get used to the prices before you're you're willing to draft players there it's just got to kind of settle into your your mental capacity at least that's something for me where it's like this guy was in the 18th round last year and i understand he had a great season but now we're taking him at the end of the first and justifiably so but yeah. sometimes you just have to like all right i just need to I need to walk there. I don't need to run there, and we'll get there by BBM. I'm having a hard time drafting Marvin Harrison in the second. Yeah, yeah, just because it, one, he may not be the first wide receiver taken. He may go to a not a great situation like no offense, but the Patriots like mm-hmm. it could they could they could actually draft him and then just like kind of tank a year and then get their quarterback. I don't know. I. Yeah, but they could also – so I'm not going to sit here and defend the Patriots because they, they have a long way to go yeah. and a lot of rebuilding to do. But I also think they're taking some I mean, unnecessary flack as well in terms yeah. of people are like, the Patriots always do this, the Patriots always do that. And it's like – New well, coaching, new philosophies there. But everything's obviously. new here. Yeah. Like, Well, theoretically, everything's new. So I think you have to kind of let it play out a bit and not fall into the – the trap of, of that particular thing. If you want to fade Patriots, I am not going to talk you into drafting Patriots when there's a lot of work that needs to go into rebuilding this organization. I've been taking a lot of Antonio Gibson, so I can't say that I 
completely fading Patriots anymore. I'm still taking Ramondre. I mean, I, I yeah. like that. That's like a sweet spot of running backs for me. You, I was actually curious. Do you think they bring somebody in? I mean, he wasn't a part of his drafting team. No, I don't. I don't think they. I think they brought in who they were going to bring in with Gibson, yeah. and. When I say that, maybe they bring in a late round flyer or an like, undrafted. I just feel like Cody Schrader is going to go there. This, you know, typical non looking white guy is just going to take over their backfield for a year and become Peyton Hillis. Great for one year and then <laughs> out of the league the next. Just get the Madden cover and bounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think Ramondre is going to be fine. I mean, I mean, we can caveat everything with health, but I think. Yeah. It's Ramondre's job again. Zeke's gone. He's probably going back to the Cowboys if we're going to believe reports that are happening right now. Antonio Gibson is Antonio Gibson. You know, we square peg round hold him for four years already, yeah. which we know what he is. He's what he should be. He's good at. He's just not a bell cow every down running back. No. And we were trying to make him that. Which is a big problem in the best ball community sometimes. Well, Kevin, Kevin, that's Kevin Smith, the the running back that like the third string running back there. Now, mm-hmm. he was really good in. Uh, he was uh, might have been Auburn. I could be wrong. He was really good, like for for the bell cow part. I always thought like that was like going to be a sneaky pick, and they just never used him. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm fine with Ramondre. I'm not like going overboard with Ramondre mm-hmm. again. That that's just the section of the draft that I like. It's. That Ramondre, Tony Pollard, you know, that whole area that we'll get to um, where I've been grabbing my second or first running back from a lot of the time. How do you feel about quarterback being like a whole round deeper this year? I think quarterback is an interesting I – th- I think the two onesie positions in general are really interesting to look yeah. at. Tight end is a whole thing we're going to need to talk about like this off season because I, no one's bringing it up except for like myself occasionally. Yeah. But the, the landscape of tight ends has changed. But in terms of quarterback, um, I'll give you my thoughts in one second after we make our two picks. But mm-hmm. I think there's significant discourse to be had at the quarterback position this year as well. But we're going to yeah. be on the clock here in a second. I've been uh... – I've been loving the tight ends late as well as early. So it's like, I bet you, honestly, I love all the tight ends this year in general. Mm-hmm. So specific. I like more than others. Cool. Uh, I think that one's a lock. Do you want to double on him? I don't think do so. Want... Okay. I don't think I want to double Devonta. I don't think I want to invest that much capital. Do you like do you Keenan Allen touch... or Higgins? Uh, Higgins? Yes. Higgins. I'll take, I'm not a fan of Keenan Allen and his legs. Did you want to go Travis Kelsey? I saw you hovering over. Well, him. I, I I hovered over him just because we're going to also to take Hurts here. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, we can get like ninety percent of the touchdowns, but he will fade late. So we would probably want to pick up like a younger tight end if we want to do that, or we could just wait to see what is available later. Uh, or, or we could get Laporta versus that. As well. I'm yeah. fine with either of the players you have highlighted. The right, Kelsey I like thing, I totally understand that point, but I also could see it the other way where he's conserved until the late the late season push as well. Yeah. So I, I think I, Higgins is the is the right call there. Cool. Yeah, the the quarterback thing for me, we're having sort of a crunch where your your high ends are moving down a few rounds, mm-hmm. but your back ends are kind of moving up. Yeah, your right? rookies and your your mobile late round quarterbacks are moving up. Yeah. Right. And so does that make the elites a little bit more of a value than they would have been two years ago? I don't even want to go to last year because last year they moved up so much. Yeah. But two years ago when you were taking some of these guys in the fifth round, right. You could still hold off till the 16th, 17th, 18th round and get viable quarterback play. And I think it's a little bit difficult to do that this year. So I think you get the, yeah, get a one kind of early and one mid to late slash more mid. Yeah. So you're looking. I think I've been a, getting a lot of Herbert as my second QB. Yeah. I'm over. I know that you guys Herbert. aren't a huge fan, but like, I, well, I'm not, I'm not not a fan. I, right. I don't like the situation. The options. Yeah. But, I think it's an oversight on my part to not be getting Herbert here and there. So I actually have been looking at him. I haven't 
drafted him enough. So it's it's a it's a blind spot that I'm trying to address a little bit. And I think to your point, when you're taking the elite, I'm still taking like a ninth round, eighth round quarterback to go with that elite, ending the position, being done at two. Yeah. I've only done three quarterbacks once so far this offseason. Oh, really? So I would yeah. say, like, well, before the free agency, I was doing three because I, I knew I was taking an uncertain situation with Justin Fields. I have a bunch of Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. So I knew like it could anything could happen. And I I learned from my mistakes from last year for drafting 60% Trey Lance in the big board. Oh, and so like, and I hit two quarterbacks. So then I kind of, (laughs) kind of fucked me a little bit. So, (laughs) so I'm like, I learned. I'll take three on an uncertain situation. That way, I'm covering my 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 ass a little bit. Yeah, but the upside is huge with that, as well as him being. But now I have like a high, like a early draft pick used on Justin Fields Mm -hmm. versus other people. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate that. And Fields is a guy that I'm comfortable doing the three QBs with. I'm also comfortable doing him. With an elite quarterback as just yeah, like a, a Josh QB Allen. Thing. Yeah, I said that a couple times drafting nowadays. Someone else I've been doing that with here and there is Daniel Jones as well. Yeah. Don't love it, but like when you get locked out and Daniel Jones is falling so late and you already have a Jalen Hurts or, you know, Josh Allen to your point, even a Mahomes or whatever, it's it's not ideal, but it's a it's a thing. Gabe Davis in the chat. Yeah, who, we, we, won't, <laughs> we won't use his real name. He says he's at 28% Bryce Young and feels good about that. Yeah, I don't I don't I, love it. It can't get worse. It can't get worse. <laughs> well, Potentially. <laughs> his whole team's saying it can't get worse, too, right? We got you got Thielen coming out defending him, saying he was put oh. in a bad situation. So I mean, it is what it is. I, I I'm not gonna knock anyone for taking Bryce Young. It's not my favorite offense to target, is what I'll say. And yeah. I, if you know anything about me, I'm very big on trying to target offenses that I deem to have some upside, right? And for better or worse, like, God, I hate saying it. It makes me want to take a shower. But the Tennessee Titans, I think, have... Dude, I've been... Yeah, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Awesome, mm-hmm. fun team. to. I don't think that Will Levis is a great quarterback, but the potential of that offense, like, excelling is... It's up there because they can easily take a Braylon Allen, and they got Thunder and Lightning with with Pollard and and, and Braylon. They could have uh, Traylon Burks, Calvert Lee, and DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, and a gunslinger like a like that's you can't ask for much more than that. Yeah, so I, I think there's a wide range of outcomes with that offense, so I don't mind taking it. It's hard for me to see an upside with the Panthers' offense as stands at the moment, so. That's kind of the stuff that I target when I'm looking at these uncertain offenses and stuff like that. All right. So we are hitting this gross ish part I of the draft. This area, yeah. So there's you, one player that I like. What what do you what would you go here? Well, I'd probably be I don't hate the falling Isaiah Pacheco, to be yeah. honest. Not that I'm taking a ton of them, but I'm not either, yeah. Where you can get them here, I don't hate it. And sometimes I'd be, I'd usually be grabbing a tight end here. But is there someone you're looking at? That was who I was looking at. Yeah, we can take Kyle. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with what you guys have been doing with one, one Falcon in every draft. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's like he, it can't, literally. I was not a fan. I talked to King Cap last year, and he was mm-hmm. so dead set on. You know, Desmond Ritter is going to be like the next, like the next guy. I was like, I don't know. Like, I watched him in college. He kind of like sits there and then throws. Like, he processes it way too long. I was like, they need somebody that can just get the ball and get it out. And I think it's going to go a lot better with uh, with him and the, with Kirk at the helm. Well, I think that you're going to have the whole new philosophy too. So yeah, you're, you're getting yeah. you're getting the new you're getting the new quarterback who just always. It makes his players Excels, fantasy relevant, yeah. Yeah. right? Are you getting a new philosophy? That's why I love Bijan more than anything. But I'm is, not taking any Kirk Cousins. I if if I have to, I will. Okay. In terms of if he's my second quarterback, third quarterback, I'm never targeting Kirk Cousins. And I think the best way to play him is you never draft him above his ADP. I'm not a huge ADP guy to begin with, like as, as you know, it's all fake. Yeah, it, it's not real, but for a situation like Kirk Cousins that I don't want to draft anyways, I want to push him because pushing him 
allows me to get a unique a unique different exposure with him right so instead of taking Kirk Cousins six picks above I'll try to push him to the next round and if I get him great if not whatever I'll yeah. take Michael Penix Jr later right yeah who was a guy I've been targeting a ton of so who are you the- targeting with uh the Vikings cuz I've been targeting JJ McCarthy I haven't been I haven't been building out Vikings teams per se. Okay. Is what I will say. If I have Justin Jefferson, then maybe, but Addison's going in a round in a range that we just saw. Yeah. Where I'd rather take Take Kyle um, Pitts or the rookie there. Kyle Pitts, Brian Thomas, right? Like that's that's what I would prefer to do in that particular spot. Hell, I like Chris Godwin more than I like. I do too. I like they Jordan said they're going to put him back in the slot too. Like that was, that's where he was dominant. And yeah. not to say that Baker doesn't have eyes for him, but like maybe he'll get more targets this year. Yeah. He catches everything. I don't know what the problem is. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a sneaky good offense. I mean, sneaky in terms of you can still get them at decent prices, right? I still like, people don't think that Baker can run a complement offense because of what OB, OBJ's dad said about him. Right. And it's like that that stench is on him for some reason. But he, but even if what he says is true, Mike Evans still lends himself like and to Chris Godwin style. to, to yeah. the style. I mean, yeah. Evans more than Godwin for sure, but we we've seen him run it already. We we've seen that the offense can go. I'm he not does. saying they're great. They're not they're not going to be the number one offense. I'll put my life on it that they're not the right. number one offense this this year, but they're not going to be number 32. And guess what? That defense is just getting a little bit worse every year right. since uh, Brady left. So more more opportunities to put stuff on the board for sure. And I don't disagree with Terrence in the chat where he's saying Baker regression, same performance cycle. As Gino, I, I don't fully I don't disagree think that's with a bad, that. I don't even think that's a bad thing in the sense like if he regresses – you know, completion wise, he could still have more yards and more touchdowns, just maybe not play to the top tier performance that he did. He also took a lot of hits last year. Yeah. And the, the offense is going to be so concentrated there in terms of it's, I mean, I like Trey Palmer. I'll draft Trey Palmer, but let's be real. It's Godwin, it's Evans, and Kate Otten, and a little bit of Rashad White. You know who should go there is uh, Zach Wilson. Yeah. I mean, he'd be, you know, de- not a great backup to start with, obviously. So he would learn underneath someone that got a lot of shit out of Cleveland and obviously rebuilt himself. Yeah, but we would be very, we'd be Look, cringing. I, I am a, I'm a Zach Wilson, like, <laughs> slight fan because he was on my million dollar winning team. Yeah. And he did win me one week of that three million. Hey. So, or that one million three week tournament. Uh, well. Okay, we have no wide receivers. <laughs> this is the part. This is why I like to have typically like four or five wide receivers. Same, generally same. But I, I also don't hate this because I, I also like this team at the same time. Yeah, there's there's ways to play this. I think where if we want to go with two RBs here, I don't hate it. I think JMO yeah. is a little bit undervalued still. Where we could grab JMO yeah. in this spot, I think he lends himself decently to almost any build, especially a build with AJ Brown and T Higgins. And take your pick at running back, right? You got Ramondre, you got DeAndre Swift. Let's, uh, let's I don't have almost any Ramondre, and I would feel wrong if I didn't take Ramondre drafting <laughs> with a with a Patriot fan. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And I, I do like JMO here. I mean, yeah, yeah. I haven't honestly, I haven't drafted too much JMO because I've been kind of like just bypassing wide receivers at that, like running backs or wide receivers at that point. Drafting my running backs, I've been going a lot of zero RB. I don't know if you saw my video from last night, but <laughs> I drafted five straight running backs. Yeah, and then I, I didn't. I, then I even skipped the wide receivers at this point, and I waited till the eleventh round, which was a lot of fun. Ooh, that sounds like a lot of torture, to be it was, honest. It was fun. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but a team like this that we were building, I've built some of these where I've taken two RBs right here. And then I've only leaned into two more RBs throughout the rest of the draft, maybe a couple late rookies or something. And then I just smashed the wide receiver button with an AJ Brown and T Higgins rotation. We have our elite quarterback, our quote unquote elite tight end. Like it's just, I don't hate it. It's not my preferred draft like you. Right. In that spot, I'm usually at four wide receivers already, but I think there's some 
differentiating builds we can make out of it as well. Yeah. And I don't see people pulling JMO up that much. Usually they get um and this is not like it, when you're at the turn, it doesn't really matter, especially especially at the turn because it's right. You're not picking for another 20, 20 some odd picks. So right. But I think people in that range where we just saw all the RBs, yeah. Uh they get they get shocked into thinking they have to take rb because that's right. what they see on the board there's nothing else on the board yeah and they and then a lot of people get scared to take the wide receivers like well why are they so far down you know, I, you know i was mike evan was 20 percent of my portfolio last year and i saw i think it was terrence talking about it i kind of i'm kind of fading mike williams this year um just on the sense that he did have an acl he is on the older side he only made contested catches he always puts his body on like in compromised positions Mm-hmm. it's not like like i don't like him as a talent i just don't think this this year everybody should probably be that high on him I mean, aaron Rodgers' to... offense with nathaniel hackett they like to run it slow yeah so, it's just... I, yeah i i can see i won't fade he could end up being a guy that i fade without trying to fade correct yeah like you'll you have a couple I mean? shares but you're not like going out of your way say he's at the top of the board and you're not taking him you He's like third on the board, and then you're not taking him. Right. So yeah. I, I'll, I won't be looking to hard fade. Probably. Well, I mean, it's all going to depend on price when. And, and what your team is looking like at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's upside there, is what I will say. Mm-hmm. There is upside. There's but... late season upside at the same time. Yeah. Right. There's single week crusher upside with Mike Williams for yeah. sure. Where you know we'd rather have a Mike Williams than you know the guy I always make fun of, unfortunately, Tyler Boyd. Right. Yeah, I'm not taking. Okay, but why is Gabe Davis going three rounds later? Is my is what my brain always says. Like, yeah, same idea, right? Yeah, it's the same player. One's not mm-hmm. coming off an Achilles injury. He's just going from a slightly, you know, so a quarterback who only throws fastballs and not always accurate and not always on the same page. So you know, so people don't like Trevor Lawrence as much, but I do. I still think he's you know really good and has the potential to be really good. He's just has had some fucky starts to every season. Yeah, I think I think them actually getting rid of Calvin Ridley is a good thing. Yeah. I, I think it just kind of he lost the flow the yeah. of that offense, maybe. So if they get back to doing what they do, and we know what Gabe Davis is, to your point, if we can get him in the 11th round, we're just looking to get three games out of him, right? Yeah. And those three games, two of them were probably explosion games. So it's the, uh, the knock on wood, the MVS – theory where if he gets in your lineup he's getting in it with 100 yards and a touchdown and two catches or something like that right so this kind of bring this kind of hammers home the point of that quarterback situation we're talking about with golf and Tua going in the ninth round right yeah with kyler and brock in the eighth so i like the way that we set up our team here yeah, we're still getting an elite quarterback. We're not too far from getting our second if we wanted to. Right. As we... Who did he get? The... Okay, Laporta. Okay. Jordan Love getting moved up quite a bit. In yeah, that's what's really wild to me, man. That's... I and, and I was one of the highest people on Jordan Love last year because it was mainly really big on uh, Christian Watson. And... Uh, we better look at the players, but uh, I I played a lot of the schedule game, mm-hmm. and they he the Packers had one of the easiest like passing schedules, so I was like super high on uh, Jordan Love. Um, what do we got here? Receiver wise, we have Tyler Lockett, Troy Franklin, Gabe Davis. We have- you have any interest in finishing tight end right now? Grabbing Dallas Goddard, being yeah. done. That works for me. Go with right. our Jalen Hurts, and then maybe a wide receiver here. Uh, who do you like a wide receiver? Um, I think this is a perfect opportunity for us to take like a Troy Franklin, a guy I have a ton yeah. of right now. I was actually talking to you, Gabe Davis from the chat about like I wish I had more Troy Franklin. So, so it works out perfect then. Yes. So I actually like this team right now. So we're sitting on what? Jalen Hurts, Kyron Williams, Isaiah Pacheco, Ramondre for the running backs and quarterback with A.J. Brown, T. Higgins, Jamison Williams, Troy Franklin. And we're technically done at tight end with Kyle Pitts and Dallas yeah, Goddard. We don't need so, one of that. Yeah, it's... So that's uh, I think that's a pretty fun double that we got with Philly. 
and the running backs are stacking up quite nice. And I don't hate the wide receiver game. It's just uh we're just gonna they're gonna have to flip flop weeks at, at the three spot. That's all we have to worry about. Yeah, I mean just fire quite a bit more wide yeah. receiver, but there's there's some valleys to dip and dive in to yes. to hit these wide outs throughout yeah. the rest of this draft. Oh yeah. Have you used the uh ADP and your own ADP thing on uh an underdog? I don't actually don't know how to do it, but I don't I, I haven't yet to be co- completely honest. I, I do like the new feature. Yeah. But I've been working away from home a lot recently. So dude, I've been so jealous when I saw you went to, down to Austin. I yeah, I got married down in Austin. So I love I love I love everything about that city. Yeah. I know Austin that it didn't have cool. the greatest ghost tour lady. I think that's what you said. <laughs> yeah, not the best ghost tour, but we got to stay at the Driscoll Hotel, which was yeah. beautiful. Yeah, we always so, stayed at the Hilton that's like a block and a half down, but I always wanted to stay at the Driscoll because but they did say they didn't have AC units there back when I used to go down there. I'm like, oh, oh really? God. Yeah. So I'm like it's a little too hot for a week went down there. Yeah. Yeah. I think they do now. I, I there's some okay. might be some units that don't, but I think there are some that do or most do or all do now. But if you ever get a chance to stay at the Driscoll, it is a beautiful hotel. It, it um, is, yeah. So yeah, I did Austin for ghost stuff. I just got back last, last weekend. I did Washington. Spokane, Washington, Montana, and Idaho um, for ghost stuff. This week I'm going to New York city for real work. So it's uh, it's been a trip. I'm going out towards Buffalo towards the end of the month to stay at one of the most haunted hotel. No, sorry, most haunted houses in America. So I am I am too chicken shit for that stuff. I believe it way too much that I'm like I can't I can't stay. It, makes, it spooks me out. It legit does. I, I watch part of your videos. So I'm like, uh, I'm good. Well, you should see this house we're staying in the end of april the hinsdale house yeah if you ever get a chance to look at it it's uh well, i'm sure you'll make a video about it i'm sure right oh for sure yeah yeah, yeah. so i'm sure i'll like i watch because i watch everything at 2x speed because I'm, I'm a psychopath and so i'll, I'll catch it real quick <laughs> but it's a, it's a terrifying looking house so yeah just a lot of travel man um lots of travel lots of flying How do you travel? driving do you do uh southwest american airlines um i try to fly delta or JetBlue. Okay. i did alaska out to washington that ended up being a nightmare on the ride home but we got home thankfully and thankfully, yeah with, the, with what we've been seeing with these airplanes man yeah Come yeah out. yeah it was a little sketchy but new york city i'm driving to um out towards buffalo i'll be driving to we're doing new orleans in september for ghost stuff so that's a fly area but yeah it's i'm hitting like the entire country this year man for the most part it's it's been crazy it's uh we've been very blessed to start a show that allows us to travel yeah it's super awesome you guys get to do all that stuff yeah and it's paid for so we're back on the clock here yeah i have quarterback running back receiver on Unchecked. Well, I definitely think we need a wide out. Anyone yeah. standing out for you? Do you like any of these quarterbacks? Though? I'm a Chargers, you know, stand, and I still think that Quentin Johnson, though not a great wide receiver, but yeah, is going to have to get some volume, even Sink. if they bring somebody in. Sink or swim, yeah, for him for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm and fine with you, that. What would you like for our second selection here? Well, let's Rashid, just... Rashid would be a late correlated pick if you wanted to go that with Carr, but yeah, I was gonna say Shahid because let's just fire these these high upside, upside wideouts right here. Yeah, because I think we can push the second quarterback still. I kind of think I'm not saying that they're not gonna bring somebody in, but Quentin mm-hmm. Johnson, you know, kind of destroying the Michigan defense. I kind of like that set with Greg Roman's offense. With a lot of running, you know, you're going to need a physical big guy like Quentin Johnson. Run yeah. blocking. Uh, Terrence is asking me if there are degrees oh. of haunted. I thought haunting is binary. It's either haunted or known. Uh, and I agree with that to an extent. I We actually make fun of a lot of the times on the show list of the most haunted places. But what I, what I will say is some places have more activity than other places. So... We've actually gone to places and got nothing. Like we don't go and get something every time. So 
that is a um, something i didn't mean to turn this into a ghost show by the way oh no i i'm <laughs> i'm totally fascinated i i have no uh no want to actually do any of that stuff but i'm like absolutely fascinated by people that do do that stuff is that that makes any sense yeah but what i also tell people is like you don't have to want to go to haunted places <laughs> right like i know i know i'm never gonna do that i've seen movies <laughs> but if you but like when you travel to a place and you want to know about the history of a place that is taking true. taking yeah. a ghost tour will give you the history of the city you're in like See, i'm a you... child i will do the duck tour of every city <laughs> <laughs> i will ha i'll have my little quacker we'll go in the water and <laughs> that's about, yeah. as, that's about as scary as it gets for me but but it's really helped me learn a lot of places. Like I just covered um on Tuesday, Westminster, Maryland, a okay. town I've never heard of. And now I know all about the history of Westminster, Maryland, and a lot of stuff that happened there and like who some of their prominent citizens were and stuff. So I get a good history lesson, is what I try try to tell people. Um, ghost stories are just history for the most part, and you don't have to believe in the haunting aspect, but you can learn a lot about a place from from the from the his from the hauntings of it i think another reason i'm like kind of ubered out by it is because i went to uh, alcatraz when i was seven oh, so like 90 what, 90 98 97 and we mm -hmm. got to like walk around with a little like walk them in our head and hear about all the stuff that like happened there it was yeah. pretty cool but it was kind of like you did get like a weird feeling while you were there i don't know we haven't done a prison yet and that is on my list to cover i really want to go investigate a prison is, i was sad that they canceled that tv show uh it had the guy from lost, the big guy from lost and he was like a, a detective or something like that he like looked at all the ghosts from that were happening to this oh, really? from alcatraz yeah it was, it was super cool i don't know that one off the top of my head i'd have to hear the name it was a while back the guy it was the fat guy from lost you know what I'm talking I, about? I never watched lost what i guess oh wait how old are you if you might say if you don't want to say you don't say okay uh, I'm, I'm 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 late 30s okay 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 we're up there yeah, yeah. i'm up there too uh yeah. surprising Surpri i'm surprised that you didn't watch lost it's a, it's a uh, it's... weirdly ghostish kind of tv show <laughs> yeah i know i know i'm like one of the few that haven't watched it it's it's on the list i have to watch one movie a week right or one movie every two yeah, weeks yeah, yeah. i don't even know how i find time to do that right now so yeah so you're pretty busy i uh i watch the same movie every day to go to sleep i watch uh clue Oh really? To go to sleep. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's like they're trying to figure it out. I don't know. I, I love the history of that movie, man. They and I love uh, all the actors in that movie. Well, I love that when it originally was in theaters that it shipped to different parts of the country with different endings. Yeah, and you see all the different endings when you watch it on TV, TV or DVD or, or whatever. Yeah. But when it originally got shipped out, if you lived on the West Coast, there was a That's different awesome. ending from the East Coast to you the middle of the country. At least peacock ending, or right? The... So I thought that was a really cool thing that they did with that particular movie. It's yeah. actually one we're gonna we're gonna cover at some point on the show. Maybe I'll throw you an invite to come right. do down. a movie review for that. But people people have wanted us to cover that, so we'll uh, we'll talk about that at some point. All right. Here. We got, we got another quarterback, quarterback on. on. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, Jaden Daniels, Baker, Drake May. I'm still okay with it. Yeah. We're going to be coming back on the clock here in a Go second. The players. Uh, da, da, da. See, this is not even a, a team I don't mind getting Justin Fields on. Yeah. Because we have such a dominant first quarterback. Yeah, I wouldn't hate Justin Fields. I don't hate Braylon Allen here. Roman Wilson to grab like another rookie wide receiver would be fine. I'm, I, I'm not... good with these three players right here. Yeah, I'm not tied yeah. to any of those. Okay. Um, if you want Fields, I'd be fine with Fields. Yeah. Keep that up, and then do you want to kind of? We can finish at four, you know, because we have three. They're gonna get the ball, running backs, and we can get like the high upside rookie. Yeah, I think we can take Braylon Allen. I don't think we have to finish at four, though, with 20 okay. rounds. I think we could still grab grab another high upside guy. I think that Kyron, is. Pacheco, and Stevenson gives us that. I love Roman Wilson. I think, I mean, when I was getting him when it first opened, I was like, oh, this is going to be my new like a ASB from the year yeah. I won the million dollars. I was like, oh, this guy's – no one's talking about him. And then he went out to the senior year, the senior bowl, mm -hmm. kind of showed out a little bit, and then he kind of 
kept rising, but it is what it is. Yeah, I, I'm trying to become the Malachi Corley guy strictly. Okay. Abe Davis is also a big Malachi guy. Strictly because of the uh, the correlation to him sounding like a Amish Bond villain. So <laughs> <laughs> I need more of him in my life just for that. I like that. I like that's that. that's the only reason that I need him. So it's it's the coolest name we've had. As it a, is. As a it is pretty cool. Malachi I think that's Corley. why. Was it uh, Davis that said he's the one that's going to get mushed this year? Oh, maybe. Yeah, it, it might have been Davis that said that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do take Malachi Corley back in this range a little bit. That's good. And I also don't think that we're. I mean, if you eh, now, I probably want to stop at two. But if if we could get a late round quarterback that made sense with our tight end, yeah. Yeah. Or or just a late round quarterback that made something one of our receivers. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's a necessary a necessary situation though. Keep keep our options open, not shut it off. Right. That's another good call, Terrence. Terrence said that Malachi Corley sounds like a Peaky Blinders bootlegger. I like that as well. <laughs> That's a yep. good one. Yeah. We went over exposures on Thursday. I saw some pretty crazy exposures by Gabe Davis and uh De- definitely Dennis. Yeah, for for Malachi. Uh, for Malachi, and I forget what Dennis had. Pull that up. I don't yeah. even know who my most owned player is right now. Mine's That's Gabe so Davis bad. with eighty three percent. Well, I can tell you that I don't have anyone that high. Dennis has <laughs> Michael Wilson forty, Samir White thirty seven, and Michael Carter thirty three. Interesting, I thought. Yeah, I, I thought, you know, I was trying to pair Gabe Davis because I thought, you know, he's going to be like one of these flashy places that like, he might go. I was hoping he would go to the Chiefs and replace MBS for that role. Mm-hmm. But going to the, the Jacks, I only had two shares with those two put together. But I got 47% Troy Franklin. That is my highest. Yeah, I, I wish I could say that, that number for that guy, but I can't, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. I think a lot of people like him. Which is why I don't like Bo Nix. Is if I don't know if that makes any sense. He was being elevated by Troy Franklin, in my opinion, and not you know being helped out like by yeah. Bo Nix. That's fair. Because I, 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 I put I said I guess Spags is like literally latched onto the me saying he's like Jake uh, Jake Locker every time mm-hmm. I compare him. I, I just don't think he's got the arm strength. I don't know about efficiency stuff. I'm not that that guy but I god know. i forgot all about jake locker yeah god he was, was trash he was supposed to be the guy when he was coming out yeah and then yeah. then he oh. took an extra year and he was just fucking terrible and he went to a terrible situation yeah he went to tennessee right yeah yeah not uh, great jake uh, locker so we are looking uh, oh Baby, we got, we got a good old Gabe Davis at pick 11 here. Uh, so we're definitely not getting one of these players. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. There's some players that I like here still. Well, he's got Bryce Young down here. I don't know. Uh, we're definitely grabbing Bryce Young at the turn. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, if you want them, you got to grab them now. <laughs> I think the, the Zay Jones thing at this point is a guy that I'm really liking in this yeah, especially for this team. Is- specifically yeah i i like zay jones here for sure and i i'm fine with tez walker here too I, i've been grabbing some bateman but i th- I think for this team i'd rather have devontez walker a more splashy late side like late season upside i like that as well yeah but i i do grab bateman on teams depending on my build so yeah i will as well especially Actually, if i'm front loading rookies I, I I'm do grab some bait. I'm typically done with the receiver at this point. I'm usually like eight deep at this point. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my God, I don't know. They don't need any, any more receivers. But yeah. So I, I do like the the juxtaposition between the two players we just grabbed. Yeah. So that works out quite well. High upside early season, high upside late season. It, it kind of they balance each other and provide one really good player. Yeah. And we look like we have no legal issues going forward with Zay Jones. 
So did he have an issue? I didn't even know. Um, I think it was a domestic issue, if I remember okay. correctly, but it looks like all that's gotten dropped, so that's you good. shouldn't see any anything. So I think he's I think he's pretty undervalued at the moment. I think between that, people not realizing that's done, people still a little worried about the Gabe Davis signing. I think Zay Jones is just like 15th, 16th round guy that fills out teams really well right now. He'll probably he provides it like a, being a really good number three receiver. He's like the Tyler Boyd already on a team kind of thing. He could still be the number two as well, right? That's like true. I, I, I mean, I they, and they don't even play the same position, right? Like in general, like or you could use those two on the outside and put Kirk in the in the slot, right? And yeah, have, uh, and have Ingram in line, but use him pretty much as a you know as a four. Right. And I, so, I, I mean, I like Gabe Davis, but I wouldn't be surprised if Gabe's the odd man out in that offense this year. You know, so like I, I think Zay is a guy I'm not going to be 40 percent on him or anything, but I'll yeah. probably be a little overweight, especially if he stays around where he's going. I think he's going to move he, up. Though. He, he's a perfect spike week guy, though. Like he has big weeks. Yeah. I don't know. He got I've been a Zay guy since he came out of the came out of the league so yeah he's definitely gotten people through a few weeks in playoffs in the past so oh yeah and he was on king cap's team i believe i could be wrong but Mm. i think he was gotcha because i was he was listening to me talking about how the houston texans and the jags are week 17 they're gonna have like a huge shootout which they did you know but Mm -hmm. he didn't have that team obviously but oh well oh well that year killed me because I had 100 percent every team I drafted. I had a Bengal, uh, Bengal Bill on the team <laughs> with, with oh. the same diet. Yeah, oh. I had a, I had a rough week 17 that 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 year. Yeah, that was, that was such a weird situation. Yeah, I was on the airplane watching that. Ugh. I was like, I think this guy just like, and I literally said, I think this guy just died on the field, and then come to find out, he actually died on the field. I was like, oh, I felt like I felt kind of bad, but I was like, I was I had nothing to do with that. I just kind of speculated. Yeah, it's tough because I've I've made that joke before, right? Like as you're watching a game, you're like, oh, he's dead. Yeah. Like just not meaning that he's actually dead, and yeah. then that happens, and you're like, oh fuck, I don't know. Oh, I've made the worst joke of all time on the worst day of all time. I made a bomb joke. Not we didn't we weren't told about anything that happened outside the school on yeah. 9-11 in, in the last period of class. I got yelled at so bad by the teacher. I'm like, dude, I was just joking. Like I like I was oh, getting, they didn't, back they then didn't tell like you big, guys. They didn't tell us. Well, they didn't oh, tell me. And I, you know, I'm a, a pretty oblivious child. So like we I had no idea what was like going on, but the teachers like were yelling at me like I knew. Our school almost basically shut down. I had teachers that couldn't teach. Like yeah. that day, which they... I'm surprised, but that's what I'm surprised at because we we're from air, like next to the Air Force Base. So I, I was surprised, like, they didn't tell us anything. Yeah, I'll never forget our, our teacher, Dr. Porter, just like sitting there just because he knew when we didn't. Yeah. And then we found out at lunch, and he was sitting there and just like, and we knew something was up. And then we went to lunch, anyways. I don't know if people want to. <laughs> I, don't, I, I just, I just want to say, I, I make bad jokes all the time at really bad. <laughs> Bad timing. <laughs> like, yeah, I am that awkward person in life. It's it happens, me. man. Yeah. I have to. I have to make jokes on podcasts all the time. Not all of them land. <laughs> no, they definitely nobody. Nobody's a hundred percent. I don't think. Well, I'm close, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we catching yeah. the show tomorrow morning, or are we? Uh, yeah, I, I actually I can't wait to show the thumb we have, but. Yeah, Easter Sunday, we're going to have a draft tomorrow morning, awesome. 10 a.m. We'll be doing that. Again, the only time we don't do that is when I travel. So when yeah, I yeah. go to that house at April 21st, I think, we won't have a show that day. But it's like once a month that I'm usually out looking at ghosts. Uh, Next... We're back on the clock. Um... We have Hertzfields, Kyron Pacheco, Stevenson Allen. AJ Brown, T. Higgins, JMO. I think this is a good Shipley team. Okay. Uh, what are your thoughts on Shipley? I, I mean, I, I don't expect much, but I think there is a chance for a breakout there. And okay. I think on a team like this, where we have guys that can sustain him, that I'm fine with it. And I don't mind Malik Washington here either. Is, it, is this Eric's guy? Yeah, this is this is okay. Eric. This is okay. a time for special. 
but I mean, with this team, like we have good wide receivers, but yeah. we, we can, can always, he can, he, he'll be on the team. If he doesn't produce, oh, well, 18th yeah. round, not a big deal. But if he does produce, he is an explosive guy. He could. Heck, who yeah. knows what these kickoff rules, he could be a kickoff return specialist. I really don't know, but yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting to not just because of the kickoff, but in terms of how players are kept on teams, right? Yeah. Like, did, is that why Cordell Patterson ended up on the Steelers, or is it because he knew Arthur Smith? Right. Or both. Like, yeah. like but, but yeah, I, to your point, if it's because of the kickoff thing, I wouldn't be shocked at all. Right. Where you want someone like that on someone your team. Someone shifty, yeah. Gives them viability and it gives them just opportunity to be on the field in other positions you know so that might be the, the saving grace for like a Kadarius Tony right that, but, that poor guy dude yeah I mean, he doesn't do himself any favors but nope <laughs> but man I feel bad for him because he's an extreme talent but man if he would just keep his mouth shut and focus on the game he'd be so much better off some people just can't put it together man yeah man it doesn't, doesn't matter how good they are. Some people just can't put it together. I'm a big he, fan of people that are hot mess. I was a big fan of uh, Johnny Football. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I've been watching people not put it together my entire life, it feels like. Well, more people don't put it together than put it then together. Put it together. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something that we've come to learn time and time again in the NFL. You're like, just shut up, dude. And they just don't shut up. So I remember was watching, I was watching Spike Week and I was had the, the <laughs> I had the Giants game on on my side. I'm like, oh, Darren want to catch. <laughs> and I was like updating you guys the entire time. <laughs> and for that to be such a sh- situation, I was so bad. <laughs> so I was like, oh man, I'm going to be the first guys to tell these guys about how good Darren Waller is. <laughs> <laughs> he was so bad at the Giants. I, man, I had no desire to draft Darren Waller. I was getting scared at one point last year when he moved up to that, like, fourth, fifth round. I was like, man, am I way off on this? And I drafted him once, maybe twice, and I'm like, I'm not doing this again. I'm not – I have no desire to draft this guy. I didn't want him in the 12th round. I don't want him in the fifth. And we lose a lot of battles, but – yeah, two of the battles that I can say I won last year was the Darren Wall and Darren Waller War, and the Rashad Penny War was the other one that I won. So I, uh, my buddy Gabe Davis, told me about Blake Watson. He's actually a pretty good running back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I already forgot the uh, out of Memphis. He kind of looks like a Ray Davis coming out like from you know this year. Yeah, they're kind of the same build. I don't know how old Blake Watson is, but he's got the same explosiveness and he's like going undrafted in, in most of these drafts yeah. like a Keaton Mitchell that nobody talked about last year until all of a sudden he was on a team. I don't know if, if he has a, so yeah, two forty, which is kind of wild for a rookie running back, you know, to potentially end up on a team, maybe on a kick return team as a kick returner. Well, when you have a team. team like ours, I think you can take those shots. Yeah. When you're, going zero, zero rb, RB. it's a little yeah it's a little tougher for me too but with a Kyron pacheco ramondre i think you're allowed to take those home run swings on a few of the guys even with braylon allen i think that helps out as well you yeah. know still don't fully know but a bell cow if yeah. he's gonna get the, if he's gonna get the, which he just feels like a dallas cowboy or a charger of some sort, like somebody that's just going to take him and abuse him and put him in, put him in there and just say, just run behind your offensive line. You get three yards, you get three yards. Yeah. I'll get him for the three to four years Yeah, from the second or third round and have him begging for a second contract, which sucks for the running backs, but you know, yeah. is what it is, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm down to, I'm down to take some Blake Watson on the squad if that's what it comes to did Penix go yet did Penix go yet uh i doubt that he has if he hasn't gone past these guys i think i think that's a gigantic edge for us not not on this team we don't need to but in general i think Penix. i mean i 
he's only going to rise once he gets drafted. Yeah. And he's... You think that once he gets drafted, he's going to rise, obviously, because he's going to go somewhere that actually wants he, to use him. Like, if he goes to my... Uh, at, say he goes in the third round to the Vikings, you think that's a good spot for him? I think anywhere that he's going to start is a good spot for him, just based on where we're drafting him. Well, what I, what right. my brain was like, okay, so he has to beat out Sam Darnold. Do you think he beats out Sam Darnold week yeah. one? Or do you think he takes a couple weeks? I mean, who cares? Like, if he takes a couple weeks, right? Like, because yeah, yeah. if we're getting him in the nineteenth or twentieth round, I think I think it's sooner than ra- than later. If that's the question, right? Uh, we, so, I mean, I don't I don't Jalen mind Hurts taking him. Jalen Hurts get gets hurt. We can throw him on this team, and we can take Blake Watson to to round it up. Yeah, sure. But just in general, for our, for our viewers, I think Penix is a guy that gets your shares now. Not that he's going to rise up to anything crazy, but. You can kind of, if you have them on your radar, you can grab them 19th. You could grab 19th round, as you just saw us do at the at the turn here. And say T. Higgins gets traded for for Justin Jefferson. So then we have <laughs> let's, Justin Jefferson. Uh, we got Michael Penix throwing it to T. Higgins. That's what we're saying as a Minnesota Viking. Sure, let's that's, go with that. That, that story is <laughs> right there. That wacky story. Yeah, that works for me. Um, yeah, but I think I think he's uh I think he's a steal right now in terms of production that he could be giving us throughout the year. Okay, so we got AJ Brown, Kyron Williams, Jalen Hurts, T. Higgins, Isaiah Pacheco, Kyle Pitts, Ramondre Stevenson, Jameson Williams, uh Dallas Godair, Troy Franklin, Quinton Johnson, Rashid Shaheed, Justin Fields, Braylon Allen, Zay Jones, Don D. Walker. Will Shipley, Malik Washington, Michael Penix Jr., and Blake Watson, contributed by Mr. Gabe Davis himself. I think it's a super fun team, right? We get. Yeah. I think it's. I think it's a smart team as well. And I think in the we way that win we quarterback them. slash tie with the you know with the top three, obviously, mm-hmm. and then we were in contention of top five, the top half of running backs every week. We're, we're winning tight end, I think, in general. Mm-hmm. Wide receiver, we're going to win most weeks by sheer attrition of the receivers that we do have. Yeah. So, I, I think I it's think fun. It's a, it's a qualifying team for sure. And it's fun. And they got fun players. Yeah. And it's three out of 12 to advance in this, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Good stuff. Good, Good stuff. stuff. All right. So, for everybody that doesn't know, I run a uh, have a Patreon. I'm gonna take. Well, actually, Rob, would you like to to promote yourself in any shape, form before we move to the Patreon? Sure. If you don't know, I am one of the hosts over at Spike Week. So catch a lot of the Spike Week shows. I'm usually there tomorrow. I'll be doing a draft at 10 a.m. for on Easter Sunday. That'll be every Sunday. And if you're into ghosts, look for hometown ghost stories. We cover a new town every single week so and we do a bunch of other stuff but um as you can see the little sign behind me here hometown ghost stories so that's pretty cool yeah yeah one of, one of my friends one of my co-host wife made that it's okay it's pretty awesome yeah that's awesome yeah this rob guy seems pretty good i'll <laughs> check him out <laughs> Thanks, all right Steve. guys we're going to head over to the Patreon. If you guys want to join, it's $5 a month and we have other cool interviews as well. Like we're about to have. See you guys. All right. I will send you the link to that one. It's already set up. We just got to switch over. Cool.